Facebook has filed a lawsuit against one audience, an analytics firm using SDK code to harvest data on Facebook users without Facebook's authorization. Twitter exposed one audience in November of 2019, and companies like Facebook, Google, and Apple all confirmed this behavior applied to them as well. Nothing has happened as a result of this yet, but while Facebook chases one audience's tail, Australia decided to target Facebook by suing them for Cambridge Analytica. This time, fines could be over $500 billion, and not that small $5 billion they paid in the US or the $500,000 they paid in the UK. So yeah, Facebook slapping the wrist is turning into a slap in the face. We talk a lot about antiviruses on the channel. Not only are they very frequently bad for our privacy, but they can actually open up their own security issues as well. Avast is now on that list because they're in the news again for a bug that allowed man in the middle attacks on HTTPS traffic. And it doesn't stop there as another vulnerability was found that allowed an attacker to take over a computer running the Avast antivirus, which led to Avast disabling its JavaScript engine. A person used the California Privacy Act to see what data Clearview AI had on them, and it's pretty much what you'd probably expect. Photos from the last 15 years on social media of this individual. In other news on Clearview AI, it seems more people are using this tool for non-legitimate purposes, including a former Trump staffer, a troll, and conservative think tanks, lawmakers, 20 investors around the world, and more. I'm gonna make a video on just Clearview soon, so we're not gonna go too deep into it today. Microsoft recently had a vulnerability allowing remote takeovers, which has now been patched. Again, keep your software up to date. Microsoft has also announced it's working on adding support for DNS over HTTPS, which would add Microsoft to the early adopter list following some other companies like Mozilla. Speaking of privacy companies like Mozilla, ProtonMail has announced they are working on new censorship circumventions that involve rerouting connections through third parties like Google. Can I just say that this article is complete garbage and it is accusing Proton of hypocrisy when all they're doing is utilizing anti-censorship tools to get their tool to people who otherwise couldn't use it. This is like saying the Tor browser uses Amazon and Google for bridges. Wah. I have every trust in Proton to do this properly and in a way that will benefit users, but we'll see. Either way, it's a garbage article. DuckDuckGo is also implementing some new things, including open sourcing their tracker radar with full documentation and everything else you need to know about it on GitHub. Great work. There were lots of leaks this week as well, starting with T-Mobile, who had some customer data exposed. Mint Mobile, I'm telling you, it's great. Get a phone with no personal information, Mint Mobile. The email addresses and travel details of about 10,000 people who used free Wi-Fi at UK railway stations have been exposed. VPN plus tent mail on Wi-Fi networks. Comcast publicly listed the numbers of 200,000 customers who paid the company a monthly fee to keep their phone numbers private. They have credited all affected customers $100. And finally, Whisper, a secret sharing app for posting messages, was victim to an open database with no credentials or password protection. Boring. This includes nicknames, stated ages, ethnicities, genders, hometowns, membership status, and location data. A good reminder that even things that are supposed to be private, secure, and anonymous may not be someday, and you should not rely on a single tool to keep you safe. The last couple company stories this week start with Banjo, that Utah surveillance company we covered last week. A previous employee has come out saying the company is using clever workarounds including secret companies and fake applications to scrape social media data, and the employee said this is essentially what Cambridge Analytica was doing. Very spooky stuff. And finally, thousands of Netgear routers are at risk of getting hacked, which Netgear has published tons of patches for. So a big reminder, again, to update the most overlooked device in your household that everything connects to your router. Seriously, if you haven't checked your router for updates in the last six months, pause and go check for an update on your router. You will likely have an update. Research. CPUs have been a very hot topic this week in terms of research. So last week, Intel had that CSME issue, which is unpatchable for anything that isn't Intel's newest lineup. AMD started laughing and then bam, oh! AMD processors from 2011 and 2019 are vulnerable to two new attacks, and unlike previous Intel bugs, this attack can be exploited in real-world scenarios with relative ease, without needing physical access, special equipment, or to break apart anything physical. So oof, Intel's like, ha, but then whoa, Intel got hit again with a security flaw that's deemed mostly a theoretical threat, which Intel has released firmware patches for. Intel has also promised full memory encryption in their upcoming CPUs. This whole CPU story was told 
not in order. I feel need to mention that before someone gets mad at me in the comments for creating a fictional back and forth story where two competitors are, you know, playing games with each other. In other news, hackers are now able to use ultrasonic guided waves on voice assistants to interact with and compromise them using inaudible voice commands. This could make it theoretically possible to hijack SMS 2FA codes, another reason to not use those, place fraudulent calls, and more. This was tested on several devices, including the Pixel, iPhone S9, and the Mi 8, and they all were vulnerable to it. Supposedly, a Huawei Mate 9 and Galaxy Note 10 Plus were failure cases, though, because of their materials that the phones are made of. So yeah, that was a pretty cool research paper. Modern RAM used for computers and smartphones are still vulnerable to row hammer attacks, despite mitigations deployed by manufacturers over the last six years. And Cookie Thief is a new strain of Android malware that acts as a cookie-stealing trojan for Android. Using two attacks, cybercriminals can gain complete control over a Facebook account and not raise suspicion from Facebook, as well as many other concerns that aren't Facebook-related. As if Facebook itself isn't a concern. The U.S. got the most news this week, starting with a federal report demonstrating why the U.S. is not ready for a cyber attack. This is a huge report that I did not bother to read, but you sure can. Donnie has officially prohibited using federal funds to purchase Huawei equipment. The House of Representatives has passed a bill to tighten oversight of FBI surveillance, which would include FISA. It's expected to pass in the Senate, but no one knows if Donnie's going to go ahead and sign it. And now, the biggest U.S. news, so listen up, is the Earn It Act, which could give law enforcement officials backdoors into encrypted software, which puts great projects like Signal and others at risk of being sued or being forced to comply with the backdoors. The EFF is taking action against this, and I hope you can help in any way you can. Facial recognition was also big this week in several countries, starting with the US, where the American Civil Liberties Union has filed a lawsuit against Homeland Security over airport facial recognition secrecy. In India, 1,100 protesters at a riot were identified using facial recognition by law enforcement agencies. Whew. And finally, a Chinese company is claiming that they can still identify mask wearers using facial recognition, even with the masks on. And this tech is applied to Chinese law enforcement. So if you are planning on wearing masks during the corona outbreak to prevent surveillance, your days are numbered. And finally, we have the misfits of the week. This is the most misfits we've had, starting with the coronavirus. And no, I'm not going to make a weirdly irrelevant guide on what to do about this, but corona has actually leaked into the world of security and privacy a little bit. First, there are programs that are malicious, specifically coronavirus map programs that you should not be downloading to your computer. It is a relatively sophisticated attack that is obviously utilizing the global panic to help fuel its reach. So. Don't download an executable file for something that you can look at online. Yeah. And a Sheck hospital and testing lab was hit by a cyber attack while dealing with the outbreak. This was severe enough to postpone urgent surgical interventions as well as rerouting new acute patients. The hospital had to shut down its entire IT network during the incident as well as two other branches. This is unfortunate. A couple leaks also happened. One was a leak of 200 million records of the US property and demographic database, which no one knows who uploaded. It's just online. And this identifies sensitive personal information of homeowners. Also, 8 million shopper records have been leaked online of UK shoppers, thanks to another cloud misconfiguration. How predictable. And the last few misfits. First, Google is now allowing users to enroll in security keys on Android and Mac OS devices from web browsers, which kind of defeats the purpose of two-factor authentication a bit, since it's supposed to be something you know, a password, with something you have, like a phone or an OTP code. So it's going to be hard to recommend this, uh, but they're doing it. Uh, Google also was indirectly responsible for a person being made a suspect of a burglarized home just because he biked by the house thanks to Google's timeline feature, which the user wasn't even aware was enabled. As most people aren't aware, it's enabled. Chelsea Manning, the previous US Army intelligence analyst who exposed classified information to WikiLeaks, has been released from jail. And that wraps up the news this week. Um, make sure to subscribe to tune in to next week's news. Make sure to check out this thing that I'm wearing and uh, follow us in our communities and also join our VPN speed team. I just made an announcement about that yesterday. Uh, we already have like 75 responses, which is crazy. So if you want to be a part of that, the more responses we have, the better. Even though we're only starting with 10 people, we're going to eventually need the rest of those people as well. So thank you all for your support. I'll see you next week.